to talk about it, you have to remember it. And while it may not be something he wants to relive, Eric Mitchell is telling his story regardless. The hope is his tale will help others understand what took place in residential schools is a dark mark on Canadian history. Then grade two, then that's when I went to Kamloops. And I learned later that the social worker from Vernon, she threatened my dad with jail if, if he wouldn't send us to Kamloops school. His father and only parent after Mitchell's mom died of cancer had no choice but to send his six children to residential school where Mitchell spent six years of his life. I could, I could show you all the scars I got for getting whacked with a ruler, you know, from the teachers. And not once did I ever remember my dad even raising his voice at me, never mind this. So to go from that to over there, where that's the first thing we got was a smack in the back, head, back of the head. Eh? And the good food that we had, we, we were eating garbage over there. Uh, I didn't like, I, I remember I didn't like how they roughly treated us to cut off all our hair short, you know, and then they threw away all our clothes and give us different clothes with numbers on it. Mitchell remembers the day he was able to leave the residential school, yet it wasn't the joyous occasion it should have been. And my dad took us out, so all of his kids and all his nephews there, we went to Kamloops, he took us to the park, he, he uh, went to the Chinese restaurant, we had a big meal and we went to the museum, you know, so we had a really good day. I went to sleep smiling. Eh? next morning early and then I was told my dad got killed by a hit and run. Mitchell and his siblings were now yeah, orphans and ironically told they could no longer be in the school if they didn't have parents. And while he wanted to leave, he felt he was being tossed aside, given up on. That is when the anger started. The angry person I became at 17 being that you know I would fight at the drop of a hat. I would uh, I was mad at everybody in the world, you know, and myself, and wasn't really sure where that was coming from. And then when I started thinking about it, I said, well, I didn't get that from my mom. I didn't learn that from my grandparents. I didn't learn that from my dad. So where did I learn that from? I learned it from those priests that treated us like that for six years. They, they said things and did things t to us that, you know, they, they sort of were brainwashing people. Eh? Brainwashing that is now being described as a cultural genocide. And while the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has concluded offering 94 recommendations, Mitchell says there's still a situation of neglect happening here in Canada, and it revolves around the parenting of Aboriginal children. Uh, the real obvious sign is they tell us today that there is, is as many of our children in foster care and in, and in the care of somebody else as there ever was in residential school. And so what that means is that somewhere along the way this parenting thing isn't out there. Right? Now, Mitchell and his wife both speak at UBC Okanagan to nursing students to provide Aboriginal perspectives as well as provide information on Aboriginal health education. For Castanet News, I'm Jen Zielinski.